Hey there, everybody. Uh, let me load up the scene in Blender here. Okay. So I'm doing a uh, map of this campus here, this university campus, and there's this kind of complex window in one of the buildings. And uh, here's the seal of the university. And I wanted to have the seal of the university be a 3D object, but of course I don't want to have to go through all the trouble of modeling all of this. And uh, I don't want to just have a... a texture with some transparency because that would be a flat object. I want an actual 3D, three-dimensional object like this. So I'm going to show you how I, I did this uh, just using the um, image, this little uh, PNG image here of the seal of the university, which is uh, Old Dominion University, which is a fantastic university. We have a phenomenal football team now, only in our what second, third year here, and we're already winning tons of games in the CAA. So that's enough of a plug for my university there. So anyway, um, I'm going to show you how I converted that into this three-dimensional object. So let me create a new Blender file here. And uh, I used a uh, another open source freeware uh, program called Inkscape. You can see here it says Inkscape. So Inkscape is, um, uh, as Blender is to 3D, Inkscape is to vector graphics like Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator is a very expensive program, and Inkscape is completely free, so you probably want to use this. Uh, but you could use this, do the same thing in um, <clears throat> which we call it, uh, Illustrator. So bring in your image file that you want to convert into a 3D object into Inkscape, and then go ahead and select the portion of the image that is going to be um, you want to turn into a, a vector graphic, and then you go to Path, Trace Bitmap. All right, and then this trace bitmap window will open up here, and you'll see that I check marked remove background because if you don't, the original background image will still be in there, and it might cause you some some problems or something like that. So I just go ahead. I just went ahead and accepted the defaults uh, in in this case, but you might have to play around with the values and whatnot. But um, I just went ahead and did that, and I just had, um, you might not see anything in the window. If not, you can hit uh, update. Uh, I just went ahead hit hit OK. And it looks like nothing happened, but it actually turned this into uh, a vector graphic. And I just go to File, uh, Save As, and then I choose um, <clears throat> Scalable Vector Graphic as my uh, option there. Okay. Uh, I guess you could use Inkscape or plain SVG, it doesn't matter. And just save it. I've already saved my vector graphic in another folder here and then just switch over to blender and then you go to file import and if you've already activated the add-on you should see scalable vector graphic as an option in here and so I'm just gonna go to my textures folder and you'll see that it shows up there and import SVG alright so now there we go we have the object and so now it's a two-dimensional object and um, I'm going to want to for one thing go I want to move the object center into the middle of the geometry there so I'm going to say select the object oops <clears throat> before I do this let me go to screencast keys turn that on so uh, somebody was asking me before this is a new feature in Blender 2.6 is that if you bring up your options window you can turn on screencast keys which just tells you uh, basically everything that you're doing um, shows it right down there in the corner alright so um, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll just go ahead and select the object by right -click clicking on it I'm gonna go uh, object transform origin to geometry and then you can see that uh, the um, object has or the center has been moved into the middle of the object geometry alright so then I'm going to go and you see that this is actually a curve object so we have this new little tab here for curves or paths I mean and so from here we can turn this into a three-dimensional object and it's very easy to do you just start whoops it's a bit touchy you just start uh, typing in a value for the extrude here and then you can see that we start getting oops, a three-dimensional object here We'll say 0.3. Okay. And I don't know why it's, oh, you know what? I'm going to put a different material on here. For some reason, my diffuse material is very, very dark. There we go. Okay. And so now you can see, just go back to the uh, path here. I, I went ahead and, and I think it seems that two dimensional shape seems to work best. 
you would think that three-dimensional shape would work best, but you can see, well, you know, it just depends on what you want. You can see here that I think the two-dimensional shape filled in things uh, better, but, you know, three-dimensional, uh, maybe you want this kind of uh, cut out here or whatever, but um, in this case, two-dimensional is what I want. And you can see that this, this looks really, really quite nice. And uh, from here, it's just a... Uh, a standard object you can you know pretty much animate it if you want and whatnot now it's it's not a a mesh object so you can't if you go into tab in your edit mode you'll see that you know these are actual curves here so when you edit it you're actually editing the curves and uh, not like polygons like you're normally doing but that's the basics of how to take a flat image and turn it into a 3d object all right and i hope it helps you out